At the worst times in our lives, we are asked to be the strongest and bravest, and sometimes we even surprise ourselves. We begin on the afternoon of June 4th, 1995, as 15-year-old Casey Floyd was riding his dirt bike in a rugged area outside Stanford, Kentucky. I've been riding motorcycles and dirt bikes four wheelers since I was four years old. Every Sunday there's at least five to ten dune buggies that ride. It's probably more dangerous to ride a dune buggy because when you get to flipping it, you're in trouble. I got to the top of the hill and looked down and I seen a dune buggy playing around. There's a hill called I-75. It's real long and steep, real rough and rocky, got big rocks. His head was bleeding real bad. I knew he had a broken neck because he couldn't okay? move his legs or feet. I just didn't think that they would be there quick enough. When the dune buggy flipped in a remote area of Kentucky, 15-year-old Casey Floyd was the only person who happened to be nearby. I heard something like a tree falling, a crashing sound. When I got to the bottom, I saw the dune buggy and it was wrecked and beat up pretty bad. Uh, Pam, you okay? Leg. Her leg was pinned underneath the bars of the dune buggy. The woman kept talking about her friend, and so I finally looked around and seen a man. Sir, sir, are you okay? His sir. head was bleeding real bad, and he was unconscious. I noticed two of my friends coming towards me. Michael, there's a wreck back here. You go call for help. You come with me. When me and my friend got back to the site, we went over to the woman and told her that help was on the way. Told her to stay calm. Among those dispatched to the scene was EMT Jeff Godby with Stanford EMS. I don't know where this road's going to take us. We took the ambulance in as far as it would go until the road got too rough. We wasn't real sure where to go. I'll let you know what we got. Just relax. I knew he had a broken neck because he couldn't move his legs or feet. I just didn't think that they would be there quick enough. What's going on? I saw one patient lying on the ground. How are you? Talk to me. Talk to me. A man called me by name. And I didn't recognize him at first, but then everything just kind of clicked together. I realized it was Brad Oaks, a friend and a police officer with the police department here in Stanford. Did you get flipped out? Whenever it's somebody you know, everything just kicks into high gear. You cross all your T's and dot all your I's. Are you hurting anywhere else other than your head? Talk to me. He kept repeating himself. And that was an early on sign of a possible head injury. I knew who the passenger was that was still in the dune buggy. It was Priscilla. She was complaining of pain to both of her legs. One of was kind of angulated to the outside. Within 14 minutes of the call, a Lincoln County rescue unit arrived, including EMT Ron Lester. She uh, called my name out. And I looked and saw who it was. It kind of made my heart sink. And uh, we've known each other all through school. Stay calm, okay? But she was harnessed in, but 
I figured she took a pretty rough hit. You all right, Priscilla? Brad was repeating one question over and over and over again. That was, where's Priscilla? And the more often he repeated the questions, I know the worse his head injury was getting. One, two, and three. There was a big puddle of blood. His head was laying in. It kind of got me sick at one time. Priscilla's injuries appeared to be stable. Brad's injuries, however, appeared to be progressively getting worse. Doing fine, doing fine. Come on, Brad, talk to us, bud. At this point, Brad didn't even recognize me. I could call him by name, and, you know, he was just talking out of his head. I knew I was hurting, but I was thinking more of Brad. I thought I'm like, Lucy. So I kept comforting her, telling her that he was going to be fine. But if he did pull through, there was the possibilities of brain damage and paralysis. We go through all this training. They teach us how to save people's lives. And we're doing everything by the book. And regardless, Brad just continuously got worse. I reached over and grabbed his hand. And he didn't try to hold my hand or anything. I was pretty shook up. I was crying. It's pretty... Pretty upset. A SkyCare helicopter transported Brad Oakes and Priscilla Kennedy to University of Kentucky Chandler Medical Center, where they were examined by neurosurgeon Deborah Blades. Okay, this is second patient from this. Priscilla was assessed and was found only to have injuries to her legs. She did not have any neurologic injury that required our further intervention. But Mr. Oakes did not wear a seatbelt. When I hear about a patient being thrown from any vehicle, I worry about severe head injury and spinal injury. Lay down, man. Come on. With the degree of his combativeness, he could severely injure himself and render himself quadriplegic or even uh, die suddenly. Brad's mother, Wanda Oakes, waited for word on his condition. The doctor came in and said his neck was broken in two places. His clavicle was broken and he had a head injury. Um, Brad's stable right The now. spinal cord was still intact, they felt, but they didn't know about brain damage. I thought as long as he didn't die, we could handle anything. As long as he didn't die. Where am I? I don't think there's any words to describe it when you think you might lose a child. All I could think about mostly was his three little kids. They idolized their daddy. They think he hung the moon. They thought maybe he could have brain damage whenever he woke up. Brad, it's me, Priscilla. I thought, you know, he's not going to know me. I didn't want to lose him because we had just started our life together. The next day, when I went in, I called his name. I said, Brad, do you know who I am? And he said, you're my mom. <laughs> in two days, Mr. Oakes was speaking properly, answering our questions. I explained to him that he could not go home until he was fully capable of walking with the specially designed halo vest. Excellent. He got up out of bed and walked the length of his hospital room. I was uh, very surprised that he was able to walk out of the hospital in three days after his accident. It took five months for 29-year-old Brad Oakes to completely recover. Whenever I had went for my first checkup, I had met a fellow. He had broken one of the vertebrae that I had crushed. Except I was sitting in a chair, and he got wheeled in a wheelchair. And he said, you mean you broke two vertebrae in your, in your neck, and you're still walking? I said, yeah, I'm pretty lucky. Anytime you're participating in any type of sport, especially with off-road vehicles, you have to wear the proper gear. If you don't wear the proper gear, proper safety equipment, you're just asking to get hurt. I knew all the people that came to help me. There's really no way to say thank you for everything they do. And I just tell them, you know, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be around. He sees things differently now. 
He's a lot more careful with a whole lot of things that he does. When I see Brad today, the kids, I'm so thankful that we both made it. My kids mean everything to me. I wonder what it would have been like if I wouldn't have made it or if things had turned out different. You know, I don't, I don't like the idea of my kids push, pushing me around the wheelchair. I just thank the Lord that he let me stay around to be with him.